What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be the November update for the EG4 hybrid solar heat pump. As you can see, we're running away right now at 72 degrees. We've got a nice cold day out here today as we come to the end of November. Heat pump's running, no frost on it just yet. It hasn't been running for that long. Uh, we're not making a lot of solar right now. You can see we've got a good bit of snow on the other solar panels back there. So I'm sure these ones have some snow on them too, but hopefully in an hour or two, we'll get a little more sun peeking through here. Like I said, it is a nice cold day. We're sitting at 21 degrees Fahrenheit outside. This is a nice little weather station I picked up recently. It's got a ton of cool features. I'm gonna be doing a video on it, but it's pretty helpful for uh, these videos as well. You can see we're at 71 degrees indoor, 21 degrees outdoor, and it's a breezy day. We've got a wind at about 8.1 miles per hour right now. So I was not able to go the whole month of November on the heat pump. I did have to turn on the gas furnace, but I ran it in the most economical way I think I could have done, which is uh, sort of that time of use method. I'll show you that inside now. As you can see by the screenshot here, our hydro does get a lot more expensive during the day from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. There are two different rates. After 7 p.m., it does fall to about eight cents per kilowatt hour. So I generally run the heat pump after 7 p.m. I run it through the night. Obviously during the day, if the sun's out, I run the heat pump to get that free heat. But if the sun is not out, I have been switching to the gas furnace. I'll show you the gas furnace schedule. I generally kick it on after 7 a.m., warm the house up then shut it off and wait for a bit of sun. If it gets sunny, sunny enough for the heat pump to run all on solar, I will switch to the heat pump. If not, I let the furnace take over for most of the day until about 7 p.m. when the heat pump automatically kicks back on on its schedule. So as always, we'll do a quick COP calculation for those of you curious on the one ton COP in about 21 degree weather. Now keep in mind, we are mostly on grid power right now. We're not getting much solar, so that may have a small effect on the efficiency. We are currently running at 580 watts and our indoor temperature is sitting at 75 degrees. So if we take our supply temperature minus our room temperature, we get a delta of 25 degrees. Multiply that by our airflow, 256 CFM times 1.08, that constant number, gives us a BTU output of almost 7,000 BTUs. Divided by 3.41 to get us back into watts, we have a 2,000 watt output divided by our input wattage of 580, and we still have a COP of 3.5. Okay, so here we can compare our outdoor temperatures to the gas furnace runtime. Now, unfortunately, the nest only goes back to November 28th. It only shows you the last week or so, uh, but you can see our average outdoor temps have been just below freezing, 29, 34, 29, 30, a um, couple cold days. So. This is the online dashboard for that weather station I was telling you about. It's a pretty cool little system. Um, I will be doing a video on that shortly, but you can see all of our wind data, outdoor temperatures. Um, I use a little more gas than I would have liked for November, but with a young family, I can't, uh, can't let it get too cold in here. So we are keeping the house around 69, 70 degrees, depending on the day. Um, everybody's been happy and comfortable. So it's worth it, but uh, yeah, we'll keep going into December. I'm gonna try to use the heat pump as much as possible to supplement heat. Obviously, I can't use it all the time. It's only 12,000 BTU, and our furnace is a 60,000 BTU, so we do need a good amount of heat output, but I'll keep you posted on December. And to wrap up the video, we'll take a look at our electrical history data. So we're just making about 100 watts on solar now. If we go to our data, you can see this is our usage for the day. This is our usage for the month of November. Like I said, I am using this a lot more overnight, so there's a little more grid consumption than uh, previous months. Decent bit of solar there throughout the month, but nothing too crazy. And our total month usage is 70 kilowatt hours from grid, 18.8 kilowatt hours from solar. So obviously I would like to see more solar on there, but it is November in Canada. We only have about a six hour solar day. Um, you can see our, our trend in solar has steadily been on the decline since the summertime, but that's to be expected. So I'll keep this up for the month of December, January. I'll try to just give you guys a monthly update as we go through the winter. I'm happy to see the coefficient of performance is still at 3.5 at about 20 degrees Fahrenheit. That is good news for us people in uh, zone five or cold climate areas. So as always, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.